<laughs> what up? Thanks for coming back through. Appreciate you. It's been a lot of fun chatting with all of you down in the comments. Uh, we're starting to get the community really active around here. What I do want to do is maybe uh, in the future, in the near future here, uh, maybe do some giveaways, mm -hmm. maybe do a little bit more community activity to get us chatting in the, in the comments because I really do love what we're doing down there. So props to you all. Let's get into this one. This is interesting. I have never owned. Ow, did I just hit myself in the eye with my... I have never owned a pair of these shoes. Now, I'm starting to get on a roll for that because the previous pair that I just reviewed was also a brand that I really didn't like at first. Let's get into the fact that I myself have never owned a pair of Hoka's. What? What? I saw this shoe and it was kind of crazy because I admit I got caught by an Instagram ad. What? Yeah, I'm in advertising. I work in marketing and branding. I get it. I know how to block the ads. But they got me with this one because it's just a damn good looking shoe. So then I researched it a little bit more. And what got me was the everyday run. Because a lot of what we've talked about on this channel, you and I, is that some of the, the higher end runners are not sustainable for everyday wear and everyday working out. And there's a mellowing now because you had the low end and the high end, but that mid range had been missing for a few years. And brands are starting to recognize that and get down into it. This is the new Hoka Transport X. Now, the Transport is a previous shoe on uh, the Hoka line, and it was more of a trail shoe, um, at least how they had built it. It wasn't an everyday road racing runner, track runner, workout shoe. It was more along the lines of trail and walking, hiking even perhaps. So I, when I did a little research on the Transport name, that's what I found. But this Transport X brings along the X, like the Rocket X. There is a carbon fiber plate in here. And what Hoka has done, and I'm hoping it works, they say they flanged the uh, the carbon fiber plate. So there's a particular piece that is for your toe, and then the other part is for your other toe. So your big toe has its own plate section, <laughs> and then yeah, the rest of your foot has a placement on the plate. Also... Because of the profile of the shoe, you can tell it's fairly flat. So there isn't this sort of elf turned up curve at the kick that would bother my toes because I don't like a lot of carbon fiber plates because of the S-curve. This does not seem to be an S-curved plate. God, this shoe is beautiful. Wow, it's a good looking shoe. You've got what they're denoting is a 360 degree reflective. I don't know if that's really showing up here in my lights, but apparently it's got reflective elements all the way through it. Um, I love the support. The lacing system is actually a ghillie lacing system. It is hidden underneath the fusing right here. So there are no exposed eye stays those are all underneath the fit is exact my size 12 is absolutely perfect lots of room in the toe box very breathable mesh um, the arch narrows just a bit but not uncomfortably so just a really good fit you're sitting right up on top of all of that super critical foam so there's no sink in or there's no cup for your heel so there's something to be aware of padded collar traditional heels so there's no pull tab on that on that collar portion in the back and uh, it's just a good fit all around. Gusseted tongue, breathable, also same material as the toe box mesh. It's a versatile shoe, and uh, for $200, I would expect that to be the case. Um, love the color blocking of this. You've got some fusing over the toe. And what's really interesting about this toe is while it is all foam, it's been given the sort of... Uh, impression that it's got a toe guard so it kind of looks like a cross trainer 
Hoka hasn't named their foam, but I can tell you that it looks, you know, from the look of it there on the bottom, not sure if the light can catch it just right. It's definitely got a Peeba based feel to it. It's not pebbled like Saucony or like Boost is. Um, there's a few others like my Li Ning's are, are a pebbled Peeba. This is a super critical foam they're saying, but it's not pebbled. It's heat molded. So you can see all of the designs and impressions that they're using. Um, again, that toe portion is really intriguing because it is made to look like a cross trainer. Um, it's got a pretty stout toe. When you go back to the heel, they have that fluted heel. Again, similar to some of the New Balance stuff, uh, similar to some of the Li Ning stuff. Um, I, I suspect that that helps with the crash. As your heel strikes, that little gap there allows a better roll. If there was a piece there that would be a crash on heel strike, loving that. Got a hard heel counter. You can hear that pretty good. Um, your standard insole um, looks to be actually a slice of Peeba or Peebax based foam. It's a little squishier than most. Got some perforations in it, I'm sure, for breathability. But it does not look like your standard uh, foam insole that you would get from a Nike or an Adidas. This looks to be a little more stout. I'm going to leave that in there before replacing it because I want to kind of see how it feels. One of the coolest parts of this shoe happens to be the outsole. Have a look at that topographical map with the flying birds of Hoka. That's really beautiful. I'd be interested to see what the grip is like. The compound feels full rubber. So it's not uh, it's not more foam. It's not squishy. It's actually a thin, very thin piece of rubber. And uh, it looks like it would have some pretty good grip. The there is a little bump right there on the back that's super interesting. I don't know if you can see that articulation underneath here. The heel strike is actually on kind of a ball. There's a ball of foam underneath there that's shaping like that very much on purpose. It does not look to just be some extra foam or, or an imperfection. That roll back there probably does allow for a really clean heel strike. If, you know, the, the top part of the foam is painted, but it's a little translucent right there on the bottom. It really reminds me of Brooks's supercritical foam on the Hyperion Elite. So if we get that kind of feel in this chunk of a shoe, that's pretty impressive. Now, what Hoka has done when I've picked them up and tried them on in stores is they've managed to make a really comfortable shoe that happens to be fairly light. This shoe is only eight 0.8 ounces um now that's i'm sure in the sample size nine but to be under 10 ounces is fairly light for an everyday you know your 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 racers are are light you know you're in the in the seven to nine ounces maybe um this being eight ounces it's got some of that race pedigree that it's light but it's also got the hoka cushioning and I like that they're not going overblown. Like, it's a big stack. But they're not doing the typical overblown Hoka thing. That's going to help this shoe sell. Along with the weight, um, we're looking at some specs of a 5 mil drop, they said. Now, I didn't exactly see on the Hoka site or anywhere else. I didn't see the stack height. But they do say it's a 5 mil drop. That's interesting. Um, if anyone knows or anyone has this, let us know down in the comments if you've found what the actual stack is. Um, I would like to know, only just for, for almost trivia's sake, because now I'm finding that everyone is going to be in the 30 range, which I'm guessing this is, with a 5 mil drop. So if I had to guess, I would say like a 36 to 31 because you're seeing a pretty big stack up front. Let's play a game. If I had to guess, I'm going to go 36 to 31, 5 mil drop. Anybody else have any guesses? Let me know. Anybody else know for sure? Let us know. This is a good looking shoe. Like what got me was 
the, the wearability, the fashion sense of a shoe like this, and then also the fact that it is being billed as an everyday trainer, an everyday runner, and they even say everyday run, walk. <laughs> it's kind of disrespectful that if you're not an elite road racer or looking for a fast shoe or you just want to train, you just want a regular everyday trainer, you've now been put in the walk category. <laughs> I find that funny. I find that disrespectful and funny. I hope that I like this shoe. Um, I'm wearing my New Balance um, Propels today because they are fantastic. And technically, by that standard, New Balance did the same thing. It's an everyday run walker with a, a, a plastic plate. Like, they're dumbing it down for you all who aren't elite. Like, this is a good shoe. This looks like a good shoe. I've got a coach today. So I'm going to be on my feet all day. I'm going to be wearing this. I'll have a workout in it tomorrow. So I'll chime in down in the comments and kind of update the uh, I'll update the the heading and the the uh, so I'll update the information and let everybody know uh, right away once I get some workout in it. But that is the Hoka Transport X. Can't front Hoka. You got a good looking shoe on your hands right here. If it holds up in any way, shape, or form you're gonna have a winner so interested to put some put some pressure on it and kind of see who, where it goes from there so everybody thanks for chiming in thanks for talking thanks for communicating thanks for being here thanks for being the kind of shoers that you are i appreciate it and i hope you all appreciate each other because we got a nice little community going here so let's keep it going thanks for coming through peace